Cheers, guys, and welcome to Uncle Scott's Pancast. <sighs> that is good. Got a lot going on in the old Pancast today. Let's jump right in and get started. I'm uh, going to start today with a little popcorn deathmatch, popcorn battle. Uh, Bob from the Red Mill versus Orville from Orville Redenbacher. Um, if you remember, a couple of months ago, we talked about how they're are problems in the popcorn supply chain. I usually get one of these vats of popcorn uh, once or twice a year at uh, Costco and they've been out. So I started buying some popcorn at my local grocery store, paying up for this stuff. It's a lot more expensive at the grocery store versus Costco or Sam's Club. Now, both of the popcorns are non-GMO, so I like that. The Orville Redenbacher, uh, this is, each of these are 30 ounce packs. The Orville Redenbacher, about eight bucks, only about $5 for the Bob's Red Mill. I thought Bob's would be a little bit more expensive. They're usually more expensive on things like dried beans. So Bob's is a little bit cheaper here. I got some of the yellow and the white. I'm just testing the yellow here. Bob's serving size, about 25 grams. Orville Redenbacher is about 40. I chose to go with 25 grams of each. And this may be a little bit of TMI, but yes, I did count out the number of kernels in each for 25 grams. That's about 155 kernels of Redenbacher and about 143 of Bob's Red Mill. So depending on which one you use as your base, the Bob's Red Mill kernels are about roughly 8% bigger than the ones from Orville Redenbacher. Let's spin a kernel of corn to see who goes first. And it's the Redenbacher. Popping these on the stovetop, I like to pop my corn on the stovetop. I use olive oil. Sometimes I add a shake of cayenne pepper to the olive oil. Got a lot of oil in this pan here, but that's because normally I pop a lot more corn than these uh, smaller serving sizes here, but we're doing this just to compare. And a shout out here to this old Cuisinart pan. I got this thing at Costco almost 20 years ago, a uh, tri-ply thick heavy one, and it's worked fine for decades now. And I like the glass lid on this thing because I can look down in there and see what's going on with that popcorn. And a really good job with the Orville Redenbacher here. And one kernel didn't pop. So dare I say it, almost every kernel popped. Up next is the Bob's Red Mill, same procedure. And for the Red Mill, three kernels didn't pop. And I got these laid out side by side. The Bob's Red Mill, the yellow, does seem to have a little bit more of a yellow color than the Orville Redenbacher. No big deal there. And I think the kernels, after they've popped, they, are, they seem to be a little bit fluffier. Just slightly bigger and slightly fluffier than the Orville Redenbacher. But tasting these, the Orville Redenbacher is still delicious. I thought the Redenbacher tasted good. And I also thought the uh, Bob's Red Mill tasted really good. I think they're pretty much equal in terms of texture and flavor. I do like that the Red Mill is slightly bigger and fluffier. And the Red Mill, at least in my grocery store, is a little bit better of a value. $3 cheaper than the Orville Redenbacher. So they're almost equal, but a slight nod to Bob's Red Mill. So what popcorn do you guys like? What is your go-to popcorn? Are you microwave people or are you stovetop people? I'll put that up in a poll and we'll see for next time. Speaking of polls, last poll, I put up a poll about Beyond Meat and the uh, substitute uh, veggie products for meat. And I asked, how long has it been since you've eaten a Beyond Meat or other plant-based meat substitute product? Roughly 500 people have responded. It may not be completely scientific, but these days it's scientific enough. Out of 500 of you guys, only 6% of you eat a plant-based meat product once a week or more. And I do note that it was Worldwide Vegan Day the other day. I made some bacon. Okay, what am I pouring? Today I am pouring a little bit of Maker's Mark with Coke. And nothing terribly fancy about that, but I did want to call out these ice cubes. We've talked a little bit about ice cubes and bigger uh, ice spheres or ice balls and bigger cubes with some of these silicone ice trays in the past. My wife got me some of these cannonballs. Had a birthday a couple of weeks ago, turned 29. So they're slightly smaller. Um. Hello. Now the cannonballs, they're a little bit smaller than some of the other ones we've talked about. They seem to melt a little bit quicker in my glass but still much more fun than a standard ice cube. 
Definitely nice, but if forced to choose, I prefer a bigger ball. In the hold my beer and watch this department, we talked about that executive from Beyond Meat a few weeks ago, allegedly got in a fight and bit off part of a man's nose. This week, I saw an article in the New York Post commenting on that. It seems that John Tyson, the CFO of Tyson Foods, part of the Tyson family, got drunk, allegedly, went into the wrong house, took off his clothes, and passed out in a woman's bed. So I'm rapidly losing confidence in both Beyond Meat and Tyson Foods if this is the way their executives act. And I think this happened down in Arkansas. I mean, that is solid Second Amendment territory down there. If you start staggering into someone's house unannounced at night, you better be careful that you don't get shot. Luckily, the woman was not at home, came home and called the police, and they got it all sorted out. But I do note that John Tyson has an undergraduate degree from Harvard and is part of Tyson's executive leadership team. Cheers. We're rapidly approaching Thanksgiving. What does that mean? It means that there's gonna be a lot of cooking going on. It also means that Black Friday is coming up and there's gonna be a lot of cookware sales. So it might start talking a little bit more about commerce. This is the time of year when you really wanna start looking for deals on pans, knives, cutting boards, whatever. If I see some good ones, I'm gonna start blasting those out there. I know that Cutlery and Moore and Debouillet have already had some uh, pretty big sales, and I'm sure that there will be more on the way. I know that um, Debouillet now has some value bundles, so if you're interested in Debouillet's carbon steel, I really love Debouillet's carbon steel. They've got some value bundles where you get two uh, pieces and save a little bit of money if you buy a couple. So I'll put links to those below. If I start seeing some major screaming deals, I'm going to start blasting those out, and of course, when we get to uh, close to Black Friday, I will do a Black Friday shopping guide. I mentioned that I'm reviewing this Lodge carbon steel paella pan. The weather is not cooperating with me. Um, two weeks ago, I was standing in the yard watering my lawn wearing shorts. Temperature dropped 34 degrees. It has snowed four times. It's not all sticking. Up in the mountains, they're expecting up to three feet of snow tonight and down here in the Salt Lake Valley we have the dreaded wintry mix at the moment so I have been unable to get outside and make some paella on the grill in the meantime though I have been doing some cooking with this pan inside and I just want to show a little preview here using this big wide carbon steel flat bottom pan on an electric stove top Hee! might have a slight warping issue on the flat tops. It's okay though, that is not what I bought this pan for. This is for paella on the grill. So hopefully the weather will break and we'll do a little bit of paella cooking very soon. But that review is in progress. <laughs> Quick shout out to Walmart. Um, they don't need us to do any advertising for them, but I wanna give them a shout out when they do something nice. All the Thanksgiving food items, they have rolled back the prices to last year's Thanksgiving prices. Seems like a nice thing to do. Let's jump into some community feedback. Uh, Todd Hudson wrote in talking about pan handles. He says he believes all clads handles are extremely uncomfortable, especially under the weight of copper cores and those copper core pans. He says, conversely, debouillets are a beautiful work of art. I kind of agree with this, but every time I mention not liking the look of all clad handles, I get pounded on. More of a personal choice there. Um, all clads to me are very functional. They work, just not quite as good looking as some of the other handles out there. Uh, Kevin Reynolds wrote in about cooking on induction cooktops and says for anybody worried about warping, they can try an induction interface disc. I've actually not tried one of those, but perhaps I can get one of those and give it a try. I think you can also use uh, copper cookware with induction if you get one of those um, interface discs. Uh, whether that's too much trouble or worth the effort, I don't know. Maybe I can get one of those and try it out and let you guys know. Carbon steel question. Steven Slager wrote in and asked about acidic foods or their particular foods you want to avoid cooking in carbon steel. This comes up often, especially when people are new to carbon steel. What you really want to avoid, some of the things that are the absolute worst as far as acidic foods stripping off your seasoning or anything with vinegar, citrus like limes lemons any type of citrus juice 
and of course tomatoes. Those are some of the worst offenders. He also asked about onions. Onions are kind of in the middle ground. When your pan is really new and you don't have a lot of seasoning built up on there, it seems like those onions will strip off a little bit of seasoning. But once you've used your pan for a while and got some seasoning built up and it's more broken in, it seems like onions don't do quite as much damage. But definitely avoid the tomatoes, the vinegars, and the citrus products in your carbon steel. Well, that wraps her up for episode 42 of Uncle Scott's Pancast. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again next time.